Hello, everybody. Welcome back at Beyond the Blend, episode 11. This is a weekly podcast by Alberts with real talk for entrepreneurs. My name is Glebat and I'm here to open the doors of our startups, show you how things work behind the scenes, and get interviews with super cool guests along the way to get you all inspired to do good. First up, please click that subscribe button. It really helps the YouTube algorithm to boost us forward into your content overview. And we really hope that you like what we bring to you every week. I'm checking in from my home here today. It's Thursday, 10.30 p.m. before this goes live. It's actually very sad. We recorded all of this 7 a.m. in the morning, but something went wrong with that audio. So here we are again. <laughs> Whew. Today is an amazingly special episode. We have a special guest. Indeed. Drum roll. No sound effects yet. <laughs> the special guest this week is Lex Asam Matheson. Yes, indeed. It's my son. <laughs> Lex was born exactly one week ago. Uh, Lex is our second child. Wow, what a week it was. To be very honest, I... I was convinced I would record this week because I promised you to be here every week. But then somehow I also thought, oh my God, it's so busy trying to keep the company running, trying to keep connected to the team. They're all doing a fantastic job. But then at the same time, the kid. But anyways, here we are. Uh, no guest this week, but I have something special. First things first, about Lex and about Vera. Vera is my partner. Uh, they're both doing fine, both in good health. Also the... Our daughter, uh, two years old, Lea, she's a very proud little sister. Um, they're recovering well. He's eating well. Shit, sleep, eat, and repeat. That's his rhythm. Uh, but it's lovely. So far, I really like it. Um, so yeah, it's fantastic so far. It was a busy, busy, busy week. We got something very special for you here on the podcast with Beyond the Blend. Indeed, special. So second time, drum roll. We are going to talk about our Financing round. <laughs> yes, indeed. Fireworks. <laughs> On a more serious note, Alberts has closed a 2.5 million euro financing round in the startup world often referred to as a Series A funding round. Before we dive into the details, oh my God, that was such a big piece of work. Um, a funding round, uh, as I will try to explain very openly later, is a very hefty piece of work. Um, it's something where your emotions and your skill set um, get really challenged, uh, but mainly your time management. It's a real challenge to keep your company afloat and at the same time try to focus on the very existence and the funding of it. Um, we're extremely thankful for the investors that have joined this round. More on that later. Uh, but first up, a very, very, very big shout out to the whole team at Alberts. And yes, I do mean the whole team from the student workers to the day one, like Stan, who was there for, with us from day one, the co-founders, uh, the management today. Um, it's really not that easy to pull an ID off all the way towards an A round and now already looking towards a B round. So yes, that's a massive achievement. And yes, we should celebrate that. So a big, big, big shout out to the whole team and a very, very special shout out to Stefan Maas. Stefan Maas is the co-founder of Alberts. He is today our COO, our operations and our financial officer. Um, Stefan and I, I think, have been working on this for like over the course of the last year, like, I don't know maybe 50 to 100 nights. We have this crazy rhythm where we work then at night. Um, these nights often end with like a delusional fit of laughter. We just burst out in um, somehow seeing the irony and seeing the, the humor in everything we do and uh, the situations this startup is basically bringing us in. So Stefan, I totally love you. Yes, we're also good friends already from back, 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 back in our youth, but this was a fantastic journey together once again. And we're already actually onto the next one. So I really love this and let's keep going, mate. As you all know, we ask our guests always to go beyond the blend, meaning that they try to share some insights of their journey uh, that really can help people and inspire people. So of course, we have to take the lead ourselves. Let's talk openly about that financing round. To be fair, I think when my VC advisor will see this, he will be like, oh my God, dude, what did you know? But <laughs> let's try to answer five topics uh, which i see very much recurring when people ask me about funding rounds and i'll try to answer them as honest as i can 
Here we go. Topic number one, what is actually raising money and what does it mean to have reached an A round? Well, that brings us to the ABC of investments. So I can really recommend you investopedia.com. It's frankly the Wikipedia of investment. Uh, so there you can really find all nomenclature, tips and tricks, small insights. So I really, really, really advise to take a look there if you're a young founder or a starting founder. Um, so basically, if you take a look here, for example, they have a page on what is an A round, a B round, a C round. They have videos. Thank you. Take a look at also really nice. Like they really explain you how does it work from the start. Now be aware that there are differences from continent to continent. If you're working from Asia, from Europe or US, yes, there will be differences. Often they also touch upon these differences, but often it's also very US based. So beware. All right. So let me take you very quickly through the uh, pre-seed, seed and a round of Alberts and try to project to you how that was for us. So a pre-seed round means that you get us some money, often your own money, uh, where you can just work on your ID. Um, often that can be on paper. Often that can just be with a very, 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 very rough prototype, just some sketches. Uh, but that first money gets you somewhere. In the case of Alberts, our first money was our own money. Uh, Philip and I, we were true three co-founders, Philip, Stefan, and me. Uh, Philip and I, we invested all the cash we had uh, into the venture or onto the business account. Um, we got started at that time, I think with 38,000 euros altogether. Uh, that was uh, me and Philip, all our cash, and then Stefan contributed equally to the share division. And then right after you did that, uh, very often you start to look for what is called a seat round. A seat round is something that ranges, let's say, from 100K to maybe half a million. Um, in the case of Albers, that was 300,000 euros, our first seat round. The seat round is really where you try to work on your technology and on your innovation and where you try to get first proof that you can actually do what you're saying that you're going to do. <laughs> In that A round, you will very often rely on angel investors. Angel investors meaning people who are knowledgeable in your field or who are frankly just loving you and who want to fund your ID, but mainly often you and your team. In the case of Elbers, we have been working a long time to mature our technology. We have a lot of proprietary technology in the fields of hardware and software, uh, so we have to develop a lot and test a lot. Uh, we went through three seed rounds, which is rather particular. Uh, it's not very often that people go through three seed rounds. These seed rounds for us were necessary to get that technology to a level that we could really deploy it to the market and start full force thinking business. That brings us then to the A round. The A round investment is the investment round where you really start to focus on your business. You have a plan that will start generating cash. You have a deployment plan to get your products to the market, a go-to market plan. And you really start focusing on how can I acquire customers and how can I scale my business? So it's that first market deployment that you're gonna finance and it's that first go-to market. Also here, Alberts is a rather exceptional case. Uh, all of us, I mean, literally, all of us, uh, went through the COVID-19 crisis. Now, frankly, for us, that was a pretty harsh time. Our product is a product that does very well at locations with a lot of people. And these locations were very scarce during the pandemic and certainly in the beginning. Um, so in this round, this two and a half million euro investment round, uh, we basically have a gathering of various convertible notes that were all now converted in uh, in this equity round. Now, what the hell does that mean? These convertibles or safe notes uh, basically are loans that with regards to certain conditions that need to be fulfilled will turn into equity, so shares of your company, uh, at a certain moment. So at Alberts, uh, when the crisis hit really hard, we were in the middle of trying to raise money. So it was a very, very, very tricky moment. Uh, and at that moment, we got our first convertible note uh, we continued with another one after that and then now we converted all the convertibles in and we got a, a tranche of fresh cash in the company as well all together leading to two and a half million euros in funding the convertible node is actually a very interesting instrument uh, because it kind of delays negotiations the only thing you need to negotiate is a cap which means the maximum valuation that the shares will actually be converted at it gives the investor somehow peace of mind where he says you know what if one day they're really doing well at least i will still convert that valuation and not higher and at the same time you don't need to go to the notary now it does have some influences on your balance sheet so you really have to check with your accountant and your cfo but in general these instruments can go fast and these instruments can mean that your relationship with the investor can start off very, very quickly, uh, which is often a very good thing. Second question is, uh, how do you get started to raise money? 
Now, that is a fantastic question, and that will be different in any case or any person will have their own journey. But I believe that I've learned in the last years that the sentence, it matters more who you know compared to what you know, is very valid when it comes down to investing. Now, I want to add directly that the people that you will then in the end know, which are indeed important, still care about what you actually know. (laughs) So it's not like it only matters who you know. But I want to say this, every single investor or every single investment, let's say, entity that actually is on our cap table, and I literally mean every of all of them, we have actually met physically while we were going to an event, while we were joining some kind of a course, some kind of a pitching uh, day, or some kind of a network that somehow got us in contact with people. So you really need to get outside of your door. That sounds today in the Corona times rather like, really, can I just do a video call? But no, really, um, our experience is you need to start building that trust relationship with people. And it's extremely essential to do that uh, and to know that it might take some time. So let me give you some insights on who was uh, leading this investment round. Leading means that that is the main investor. It's not one-on-one that they always invest the most money. Very often they do, but it does often mean that they actually dictate the terms of the investment and the other investors kind of follow along that term sheet. In our case, we have a serial entrepreneur and quite literally, I have to weigh my words, but yeah, I think I'm going to say like this, quite literally the most impressive person I've ever met in my whole life. I don't know if I will look back at all these podcasts, how many times I will say something like this, but I really mean it. Um, Christian the Wolf uh, is our investor and his family is investor too. Uh, Christian the Wolf is a serial entrepreneur. He founded the company Solina, a over a billion euro company. Um, he is a serial entrepreneur because he is at the same time in many, many, many ventures and has been in many, many, many others in the past. He's always in food and food tech. His slogan is always do something that will improve the place or the way we live a little bit. So always try to improve. Chris, I absolutely love you. You have been supporting us. Um, Basically, our real relationship started when COVID hit. I think the next month, you were somebody that kept on believing, that kept on pushing, not just believing, but pushing, pulling, helping us. Um, Yes, of course, it's only one call a week or something like that, but it does help us so much. Um, All the relationships you brought, all the efforts you've put in, um the relentless support you gave us so that is absolutely amazing thank you very much for all of that um and it's your push also that basically got us into soups so chris is a kind of investor that also comes with a vision that also comes with an id to really change your business or to pivot your business for us that was really adding something to that end product line so basically pivoting from cold drinks also to hot drinks not only he was proposing that or pushing that, but he was also really, 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 really helping us to get that technology working. So anyways, Chris, massive thank you for uh, this so far. Uh, our whole team is inspired by you, likes you, loves you. We want to say thank you and want to push this forward maximally in the next years. Let's go. Our second investor is what they call an institutional investor. Now, an institutional investor in many cases is linked to the government. Uh, the institutional investor we have on board now, and I'm very proud, is EIT Food. What is EIT Food? Well, EIT Food is linked to the European Commission and is part of one of these pillars. EIT Food is there, EIT Manufacturing, EIT Health, EIT Digital, and many others. It's the Europe, European Institute for Innovation and Technology. So I'm very proud, actually, that they are investing in Albert. There were two safe notes uh, that converted in now, and both of them actually came with a competition where we were one of the approximately a dozen companies each time that were actually selected for the, the safe. So I'm proud of the whole team that we managed to do that. And I'm really thankful for EIT Food for their continued support. Um, EIT Food is an organization that brings together big corporates uh, like Danone, uh, like PepsiCo, Uh, And that brings them together towards smaller startups, but with innovative ideas and innovative technology. Uh, The startups they call rising food stars. So we are a rising food star. Sounds cute. Uh, So to all the people at EIT Food, thank you very much for the support. Um, uh, This is uh, really important for us also on a credibility level. Um, And so, yeah, thank you. 
and let's go. Thirdly, uh, in this round, we have several partners and directors of the investment firm Perwin that joined our company in person. Uh, Perwin is a VC, but more private equity company, meaning that they more focus on later stage growth companies. So an A round is not really their cup of tea. Uh, however, the uh, directors and the partners at Perwin, uh, we have a good relationship with them. Um, we really uh, like their vibe to grow businesses, to really expand businesses at a very very rapid pace um, it's an evergreen fund meaning that they don't close their fund every four five seven years uh, so there is no cycle uh, where your investment needs to be returned or generated a return so uh, many of these things stick all our boxes uh, we're super happy to have you on board uh, and um, yeah i'm very curious where this track will take us and how this growth can be uh, basically go through the moon <laughs> Lastly, we have some advisors that joined this round. Uh, this is maybe a bit atypical in an A round or at least in a B round. Uh, these advisors are people that work together with us that often are also paid. However, these advisors also uh, put what they call skin in the game. Skin in the game meaning that they invest part of their private uh, financing into the startup. Why do they do that? They do that to show that they're real, that they don't just come for their invoice. Uh, these advisors for us are on finance. We have advisors on strategy and an advisor on technology. Um, so they join it, uh, the round. Of course, their tickets are smaller. The ticket is a part of an investment round. So their tickets are definitely smaller, but I find it still important. Um, they always say don't get your cap table too big and that's definitely true you don't want to have 155 investors uh, but at the same time everybody who's on there needs to be dedicated and now we really generated that so i'm very happy with that and thank you very much topic number three does it go fast well the answer is no it's very simple um no it does not go fast it takes six months and more uh, it can take 10 months um however there is an important however and that is that it is easier than ever to raise money now that sounds like I'm going crazy here at 11 o'clock, but no, it is easier than ever before to get money for a very innovative idea. Now, I do know that people like Christopher Columbus also had their funders, right? But, um, but it is true that innovative startups where people who have sometimes even zero business experience. Uh, in our case, we had a first startup that we exited, uh, Hans and me, the other manager now. But still, I mean, uh, very, very young people with a bright idea can get significant amounts of funding in order to get that idea off the ground. So today is easier than ever uh, to find financing. However, it is still very hard. Uh, it's a nerve wracking process. I said it in the intro already a little bit. You kind of have to balance your daily day to day life with your business. Uh, but at the same time, you really need to make sure that you get that investment over the finish line. And talking about a finish line, I think uh, an investment round is very much like a marathon. I ran one marathon before. Uh, my other co-founder, Stefan, has run multiple. Uh, and he actually also has a great time. <laughs> and our other manager, Hans, uh, he's doing triathlons. So I think this says something. Um, an investment round is something that takes a very long time that requires consistency, that requires you to, with the whole team, go for it no matter what, uh, and start, keep believing in the positive uh, aspects that you see on a day-to-day -day level, although they might be small parts of progress, but you have to keep on believing that these small parts of progress will actually in the end get you towards success. And that you have to then transpose to the investor. So yes, yes, it, it does take a long time. It's just what it is. Last one, who does the fundraising? Very often with founders, uh, they're asking questions like, okay, do you do fundraising yourself? Yes or no? Do you have a company that you pay to actually go and find funding for you? So many answers, um, many questions, many answers in this case, but uh, let me share our point of view. Um, so far, we uh, have not found a party that we actually trust. And it sounds brutal, but we never found a party that we actually trust. Um, that is doing a financing round for us. Uh, we have done some trials in the past, 
Uh, we kind of found our own formula uh, thanks to EIT Food. We had an advisor, Cedric, big shout out, um, who joined uh, our board and who also joined us as an advisor on the fundraising aspects. He was a VC himself or working for VCs, uh, which is very nice uh, because it means that he saw both sides of the table. Now he's doing deals for startups. So really somebody who is embedded into that uh, system, who is embedded into that world. And that helped us a lot to get one-on-one -on -one coaching and really on a very daily basis like literally ringing up five times a day whenever when you're in the park or whenever um in the shower maybe not yet i don't know cedric maybe um but so that really helped us to get somebody that we trust uh, to guide us forward um we did many of the fundraising ourselves meaning that uh, many of the conversations we did ourselves now this a round is also like i said a bit particular because it's like a stretched round over the last one year one and a half year so that means that things are a bit different uh, but still all of that we uh we kind of did ourselves um, in our case stefan and i are the ones who focus on the fundraising uh, stefan focuses on making the business plans and the financial plans and i focus more on trying to uh get the business part uh, of it ready and get the investor contact um very important to say that a, a very good lawyer firm is very 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 important Totally at the beginning of the startup, I didn't really believe it. Uh, it was uh, co-founder Philip at the time who said, no, we really need a very, very good lawyer firm. And I was more like, well, let's do it on a cheap, but somebody that we know, via, via, via. Uh, but I trusted Philip's judgment there and I'm super, super, super happy. Uh, we're actually going tomorrow for lunch uh, with our lawyer. Uh, so Luke, big shout out as well. <laughs> okay, so why is it important to get a good lawyer firm? Well, basically uh, the lawyer firm that we're at is uh, doing uh, acquisitions and doing uh, investments, uh, capital rounds as their day-to-day -day business. Now, why is that important is because uh, very often from your lawyer, you actually uh, get in contact with the lawyer of your investor. So it's a kind of, you know, like one-to-one, -one, um, yeah, some some kind of a battle that starts there or let's say a conversation <laughs> and it's very important that um, that they kind of meet each other at eye level uh, that they kind of know uh, the drill that they know the game um, and it's very important that you on your side really trust 100 that your lawyer does know the game and what they're doing so in our case uh, we work together with uh, Vanant, uh, Luc Vanant. Van Olman and Vanant is their office. Uh, they're in Brussels. Uh, we're super, 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 super delighted to work with them. It has been a real pleasure all the way through for the last years. Luke, thank you for all, all your support. You've been doing a lot, a lot, a lot of support in the background, and I know that. Uh, so thank you very much for that as well. This sounds like the big thank you uh, <laughs> episode, but frankly, it is like that. Uh, so yeah, big thank you, Luke. Lastly, the question, is it hard? So we kind of already talked about it before, but I very often hear that like, is it hard to raise money and this and that? So um, yeah, it is hard. And then the next question is always like, what's next? You know, because somehow you, you might have the idea that you get that feeling of, okay, I now did that marathon. Now we're gonna rest. But you know what? That's not the case. You know? <laughs> if you finished your marathon, you still need to get home. Sounds stupid, but that travel home is pretty painful. And then after that, you can better start moving slowly because otherwise you will stiffen up the next days like crazy. So no, it's not done. Uh, we are directly moving forward already. Uh, we are uh, gathering that fresh funding. And that fresh funding is one reason only to actually get the results that we are projecting for the future. So you can better start working your ass off from day one with the whole team to get the results that you were eyeing at. Uh, because there is a very important sentence in the investment world. And that is that investors invest in lines, not dots. Sounds a bit mythical, but what it means is that an investor will never invest in you if you walk in and you say, hey, I got a contract. I never met you, but hey, look, we got a good contract. No, they want to see a continued and compounded success and also a continued and a compounded trust in what you're doing so in that whole relationship trust is key trust is almost everything linked to that is your credibility but trust is the core of that credibility and what an investor really wants to see is that you deliver every time and time again yes you can have setbacks no problem uh, but these setbacks need to be transparent and you always need to come up with something else i was once uh where was that I was all the way in japan in a conversation with a uh, founder and he said whatever happens whenever i meet my investors i always bring something to the table and that's a very important sentence that i always remember you bring something to the table even in bad times when things are bad you bring 
new stuff to the table in order to continue the growth of that company, in order to continue that vision, and in order to continue that compounded rate of success to get in the end towards that moment where this investment takes place. So yes, it's important to get there and it's really important and really hard, but after that, you directly continue. It's a never ending story, that's the truth. And um, you better know it up front. So what does that mean for us, the next step? Well, we have been directly starting with uh, setting up our production. So basically now at Alberts, we are setting up a production shop. Uh, that production shop uh, is capable of producing between 10 and 20 machines a month. So that is the real deal for us. Uh, we will be opening next year over 100 new locations. Uh, we are going to open this year still 30 new locations. The first five machines are almost ready. Clients are lined up. We will ship these first machines all the way through the UK. We've signed a first a very big international brand partnership. I already teased it a bit last time, I know. <laughs> but please give me a little bit of patience. It will come in the next weeks. Uh, you might already have unraveled it, but it will come in the next weeks, I promise. Uh, in the wake of that investment round that we just had, we're opening up a crowd lending campaign as well here locally in Belgium. It's a bit romantic maybe, but we're opening a local production here, right in Belgium. Uh, and so we're opening up a crowd lending campaign to finance that production hub. Uh, that production hub is close to the seaside. Uh, it's in Kurne uh, for the Flemish people watching. Uh, we're opening up a crowd lending campaign. Uh, so uh, I will put the link up uh, here down in the description. We'll have a lot of more uh, marketing around that in the next weeks. But it's going to be cool and it's going to be fun to interact with everybody here locally. Everybody can come and look at the factory, come see us go forward. So this will be super cool. Um, all the next steps are in progress already as well beyond that campaign. So many, many, many things in the pipeline. So stay tuned. Okay, I really hope this was insightful for you. Uh, with Alberts, this was our fourth investment round, the fourth time to the notary, as they say. Um, so yeah, that has been quite a journey so far. We have learned a ton of things, but we got a many more things to learn. Now we're focused fully on the business, trying to get the results that we projected in the future onto the field. We're very excited to get all of this together. We really want to thank you very much for staying tuned with us. Uh, Beyond the Blends is at its 11th episode and we're still loving it. Next week, we'll have a super cool guest. I wish you all a fantastic weekend. Love you very much. Ciao, ciao. All the best. Let's go.